Everyone's pretty excited tonight. This is great. Anyone who's been to this award show before has heard me get up and speak about stand-up paddling. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've quoted from my own magazine articles. I've quoted from, uh, you know, antique volumes of Captain Cook's voyages. I've really, I've really kind of explored in every way I can how unique and just how invigorating the whole stand-up scene is, the culture, the people, the industry, all of it. But this time, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be my own words. I re read something recently that I think really puts into perspective what brought all of us here tonight. I mean, I'm, something when I read it, I thought everyone in this room, anyone that, anyone that's picked up a paddle anywhere and gotten involved with this new sport, I think can relate to this. It was published uh, first in a magazine published in Bali by my brother Matthew. My brother Matt is the editor and publisher of a magazine called Surf Time in Bali. And I went to visit him and we did a really neat paddle trip. There was one SUP company there called Wave Hunters. And we did this really neat paddle trip. And the guide that went with us, uh, a really quiet, sort of introspective young man, uh, really good paddler, really good surfer. Well, as time went on, he went to my brother Matt and he said, look, there's the whole pro surfing scene and I know that the SUP scene is growing and I want to be a professional stand-up paddler. Can you help me find a sponsor? So Matt went and tried to help him find a sponsor and everywhere he went, everyone said no. Just stand-up paddling, you know, I mean, no. And so Matt had to go back and tell him, no, your, your dream isn't going to happen. But then he told Matthew this, because Matthew was uh, doing an interview about him, and even with that kind of reception, you know, that, that the broader surfing world in Bali wanted nothing to do with stand-up paddling, he told Matthew this, and I just think that this really expresses everything that brought us here together. Because Matt asked him, well, what is it about stand-up paddling that's so important to you, that you like so much? And Ben said, the quiet is what I like. Now, keep in mind, English isn't his first language. The quiet is what I like. You can still find a quiet out on the sea, just the sound of you in the water. And being able to stand on the sea is different than sitting in a boat or riding a wave. You can see the whole picture, the whole environment. You can feel yourself breathe and think clearly. I also think it makes you a friend of the things that live in the sea. I think they understand it even more than surfing. And I think it makes you understand the sea in a different way, as a visitor and not a thief. And I just thought that was so beautiful. So that was, the, that was sort of the expression of what we are all feeling here tonight by a distant brother of ours that's paddling alone somewhere in Bali introducing new people to the sport. So I just wanted to share that with you tonight. And we're gonna move on to our first category. Somewhere right now, someone's out there training for a race. Somewhere, someone out there, somewhere's, uh, someone out there is, you know, dropping into a big barrel or something. But what I think that's so great about stand-up paddling is that somewhere out there, probably right now, at this very hour, someone is out there exploring this world on a stand-up paddleboard. They might be paddling from island to island. They might be paddling down a coast. They might be traversing a, a, a lake, you know, in the, in the Peruvian highlands, or they might be, you know, you know, navigating inner waterways. The great thing about this sport is that sense of adventure that we all feel when we go out any time, but there are people that push it a little bit further. They look at that horizon and they think, what's beyond that horizon? And do I have what it takes to get there? And I think that's one of the great things about the sport. And that's why for me, it's a really, it's an honor to be able to introduce and announce the first category, which is the, basically, it's the best top expedition. And so here are the nominees. Top expedition. Bart Deswart paddled 180 miles from Tahiti to Bora Bora in four days, unsupported attaching flotation to the ends of his paddle to act as an ama so he could sleep. 
Mike Simpson's and Meldrick Velez's journey around Puerto Rico was one of changed plans and challenging logistics, but they completed the 278-mile circle. Will Schmidt paddled from Canada to Mexico, that's 1,386 miles in 58 days, all to raise funds for the Wounded Warrior Project, which aids military veterans. Ben Freeberg burned 9,800 calories on his record-setting 111-mile, 28-hour paddle from Cuba to Key West. Chris Burdish paddled 75 miles of open ocean in 12 hours off the South African coast, a Guinness World Record. Mic on? Okay, and the winner of 2014 Top Expedition is Will Schmidt. This is crazy, right? Um, I think most of you that know me are probably wondering right now, uh, wow, he owns more clothes than just a pair of board shorts and a, a <laughs> wetsuit. Um, how great is it in this day and age to be a pioneer of something, to set the standard and then be able to raise that bar? Um, how great is it uh, when everything's been done before, to be the first person to do something. Um, I think that was the rehearsed speech that I gave to Anthony Scaturo of SIC when I brought up this trip and said, hey, you know what would be really cool to do? And without hesitation, he agreed. Uh, threw me a brand new SIC F-16 stand-up paddleboard, uh, then stood by and watched me drill holes in it, and for the next two months systematically tried to demolish it. Um, by bouncing off of rocks and, I mean, just anything else you could possibly imagine. Uh, they've been instrumental in, uh, in this trip and uh, where I am today. So thank you to all my guys at SIC, Anthony Scaturo, Farley Joy, Brad Kingsley, uh, the guys that aren't here, Tyler and uh, Thunder, who were really great about if I needed parts, send them out to me, uh, making sure I was okay, Facebooking me on the weekends. Um, Another reason why I paddle is, is not for my benefit, even though I do believe that stand-up paddling saved my life uh, from the throes of anxiety and severe depression. Uh, however, I do paddle to raise funds and awareness for a United States charity, the Wounded Warrior Project, that uh, takes care of wounded veterans. But of course, that's not my scope. That's simply where my funds go. My, my scope of this uh, and in front of this international crowd is to uh, dismiss the stigma and the silence that accompanies depression and anxiety. And I'm a living, breathing proof of that, that there is an upside just like there is a downside. So here I say before you and everyone else, I am here today because stand up paddling and getting the proper help I need saved my life. I know everyone here knows someone that suffers from anxiety, suffers from depression, post-traumatic stress. If they need help, give it to them. Uh, the statistics for the United States, almost 8,000 U.S. servicemen a year commit suicide due to anxiety and depression, PTSD. Uh, move that into the civilian life, uh, add the entire world, and that's what we would call an epidemic, uh, silent epidemic. So that's my message. That's what I have to say. Regarding that, um, <laughs> I won't take up too much more time, but thank you so much, SIC, Oakley for the best gear, Magellan for getting me here and there. Of course, Google Maps helped a little bit too. Um, <laughs> thank you so much to Astral Designs, uh, the best life jackets you could get. 
carapace wetsuits. I wore that thing for 58 days straight without a problem. That's right. I showered in between a little bit. Um, God, if I missed you, Nemo Equipment, a, a small camping company out of the Northwest uh, who just took a chance on me, and uh, it really paid off. So thank you to my grandmother, my mother, who followed me in their car down the California coast. Uh, my... <laughs> My 88-year-old grandmother, um, she's hysterical. She, I, I, I washed up on the beach about 100 yards north of uh, the Mexican border, and she puts a lay around my neck, and she says, uh, aren't you glad you're done? And she says, well, I, I looked down about 100 yards, and I said, well, we're not done yet. And uh, we made it there, so uh, kudos to Kelly and everyone else that helped me out. Uh, I'll take way too much time. I'm a talker. Thank you so much.